In this lecture, we'll be solving formulas for a specific variable. This can be beneficial in science courses or in later math courses. Sometimes we need a specific variable all by itself. To solve an equation for a specific variable, you treat all other variables like constants and isolate the desired variable as you would any other equation. In our first example, we want to solve the equation c equals 2 pi r for r. Now I mentioned that we should treat all other variables like constants and solve like normal. So a parallel problem to this would be 10 equals 2 times 6 times r. I've replaced all the other variables with constants. To solve for r, I would need to get rid of this multiplication by 2 and multiplication by 6. To undo that multiplication, I would divide by each of these. We do that to both sides. And that would isolate the r for us. We want to do that same type of thing with this problem. We need to divide both sides by 2 pi to isolate the r. When we do that, the 2 and the pi cancel on the right-hand side, and we're left with c divided by 2 pi equal to r. I oftentimes think that we are just rearranging the variables rather than solving for a specific variable. Oftentimes we have in mind when we're solving that we get r equal to 6, something like that. When solving for a specific variable, most times variables don't cancel out and we've just rearranged their location. In the next example, we want to solve f equals 9 fifths c plus 32 for c. Again, I'll draw a parallel problem to the side, replacing all the other variables with constants. With this equation, we would have two options. We could either keep the fraction or eliminate the fraction by multiplying by the LCD. The LCD in this case would be 5. So let's do that. Let's take our equation. And multiply each term by 5. The whole point of this is to eliminate any fractions that we have. We get 5f equals, in this pair, I do have some simplifying to do. 5 goes in once, 5 goes in once. When I multiply straight across, I get 9c plus 160. We've eliminated the fractions. We're isolating c. I want to get all the other terms away from the C. So back to our problem over here. If I had eliminated the fractions by multiplying everything by 5, I would have 50 equals 9C plus 160. Since all of the terms containing a C are on the right-hand side, I want to move my constant terms to the left-hand side. So in this case, we would subtract 160 from both sides. We're going to do that exact same move on our actual problem. Subtracting 160 from both sides. On the right, the 160s cancel out, leaving me with 9C. On the left, those are not like terms and can't be combined. I'm simply going to write them next to each other, 5f minus 160. The last thing we need to do to 
Get that C all by itself is to eliminate the multiplication by 9 in front of it. To get rid of the multiplication by 9, we're going to divide by 9. And I'm going to divide this whole other side by 9. We end up with 5F minus 160 divided by 9 equal to C. That is our solution for C. Next, we want to solve S equals 4LW plus 2WH for H. A parallel type of problem without all the variables would be 10 equals. Now, this term, since it doesn't contain an H, we can think of that whole term as a constant. And this w right, 2w right here, we can think of it as just a constant. If we were to be solving this equation for h, our first move would be to subtract 4. So that's what we're going to do on our original problem. We're going to start by subtracting that first term on the right-hand side. It's a positive 4LW, so I'm going to subtract 4LW from both sides. These are not like terms on the left, so we just have to write them next to each other. L minus 4LW equals 2W times H. Back to the problem over on the right, to isolate h, we would then just divide by the coefficient. We're going to do that same thing on our original problem. To isolate the h, I need to get rid of that multiplication by 2 and w, so we will divide by both 2 and w. We end up with s minus lw divided by 2w equals h. This is our solution. I missed a 4. S minus 4lw divided by 2 equals h. Do not try to simplify this fraction. Don't try to cancel out the w's or simplify the 4 and the 2. You'll learn in a later course how to do that properly. Uh, simply canceling, canceling those out is not correct. In our last example here, we see that we have parentheses. Anytime we have parentheses in an equation, the first thing we want to do is distribute to eliminate them. h times pi r squared is h pi r squared. h times a negative lw is minus h lw. We're solving for w. This is pretty much the exact problem that we just did. We want to start by getting rid of this first term here. The way that we're going to do that is by subtracting, since it's positive. Those are not like terms on the left, so we need to write them right next to each other. V minus h pi r squared equals negative h l w. To get w by itself, I need to get rid of the h and the l. The operation between the negative h l and the w is multiplication. So to get rid of it, we'll do the opposite operation. We'll divide. A common mistake is that people want to add HL to both sides because they see that negative sign. Make sure you pay attention to what the operation is between those variables and the variable you're solving for. We end up with V minus H pi R squared divided by negative HL equal to W. 